Over the course of the 20th century, we have witnessed exponential advancements in the collective knowledge of mankind. In every field of science and technology, our achievements are no longer measured in centuries or decades, but in years and even months. With this extraordinary growth, mankind has surpassed every achievement recorded throughout the millennia of known civilization. But what if the breakthroughs of today concerning humanity, the earth, and our beginnings are not new wisdom at all? What if much of this supposed recent knowledge lay secreted away in the ruins of a once powerful society, awaiting our discovery? Could this alleged new knowledge uncovered in Earth's little corner of the universe be considered Genesis Revisited? This is the belief of the world-renowned archaeologist, linguist, and expert in the field of cultural anthropology, Zechariah Sitchin. I'm Zechariah Sitchin. I devoted a lifetime to the study of ancient civilizations, ancient languages, their art, their beliefs, and the knowledge that they had. And the question is, when you study, when you look at all that, is it myth, is it mythology, or did it really happen? I believe it all really happened. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? A manned mission to Mars? An ambitious objective. And with the success of the Mars probes and NASA's rover, one that humanity has made substantial strides toward achieving. Could there have been a space base on Mars in antiquity? If we had physical, tangible evidence of, of artifacts on Mars, we are not only not alone in the universe, but someone has been on the next planet over. That in itself will, will forever change our frame of reference. Mankind came out of the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages, reached the Age of Enlightenment, experienced the Industrial Revolution, and entered the era of advanced technology the era of genetic engineering, and the era of spaceflight. Thanks, Dano. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds forward. We copy it down, Eagle. The Eagle has landed. Astronauts who land like eagles. Zechariah Sitchin's research reveals that in our ancient past, there were advanced beings referred to as the Anunnaki, translated, those who from heaven to earth came. The idea that there was, in our solar system, a race of intelligent beings far older than us who are now gone would certainly force us to rethink lots of questions, including the question of human origins. Where did we come from? Could we be the products of genetic engineering? The hypothesis that modern science is only now catching up with ancient knowledge is inspiring scientists and researchers to increase efforts to rediscover that which may have been lost over time. It rekindles a situation that has lain dormant almost 5,500 years. The incident of the Tower of Babel. In the Babylonian version of the biblical story, the people of Babylon were building a tower whose head shall reach the heaven, in which a Shem, a space rocket, was to be installed under the direction of their supreme god. But the other deities were not amused by this foray of mankind into the space age. The biblical story recalls that Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower that the humans were building. And he said to his colleagues in Genesis chapter 11, This is just the beginning of their undertakings. From now on, anything that they shall scheme to do shall no longer be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down and confuse their language so that they should not understand each other's speech. Thanks to the science of archaeology, experts now know that the first great civilization emerged almost 6,000 years ago. Older than the Greeks. Older than the Mayans. Older than the Incas.
The people of this society were called Sumerians, after their land, Sumer, in the great plain between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, today's Iraq. The book of Genesis calls the land Shiniar. For generations, biblical scholars either ignore biblical references to ancient kingdoms or categorize these as legend or lore. Through the study of historical relics and the translation of ancient languages, many biblical researchers now believe that the previously questioned Old Testament references are indeed historically authentic accounts of flourishing, advanced cultures. If you study the Genesis document, uh, you know, the, God uh, made Adam out of clay and then took Eve out of his rib, uh, one of his ribs, etc. Uh, if you study this document, you discover that it, it's really a, a much shorter version of a much more complicated document that comes out of Babylonia and, and then out of Sumer and so on. Now, these ancient texts are give a really complicated story of powerful uh, non-human godlike beings actually engineering us, making us uh, with, for specific purposes. Zechariah Sitchin's investigation into these cultures brings him to this 6,000-year-old temple in an excavated area of the ancient city Erech. Until its discovery only 150 years ago, Erech was known only through passages in the Bible. The temple is dedicated to a female goddess named Inani, also referred to in later times as Ishtar, Zechariah Sitchin. You can see here her features, a little damaged. Her divinity was marked by the pair of horns that she had. Uh, she held a jar with the water of life, and uh, she was surrounded as a decoration, but perhaps also symbolically, with a symbol that some referred to as entwined snakes, which was the symbol of science in, in those days, 6,000 years ago. Uh, some find in it a precursor of the Egyptian Anch, which was the symbol of life and creation. Further results of Mr. Sitchin's research affirm the theory that this visage of entwined snakes is the symbol for genetic manipulation of DNA. Carved out in stone over 6,000 years ago, Ishtar is sometimes depicted flying through the sky and leaving the Earth's atmosphere to traverse the heavens. In ancient Mesopotamia, the secrets of astronomy and other celestial knowledge are kept carefully guarded, studied behind closed doors by an exclusive society of priest astronomers. Cylinder seals like these are the only surviving record of these carefully guarded secrets. This clay tablet carries the print of a cylinder seal about 4,500 years old. It depicts the god Enlil granting the plow to humankind, ushering in the age of modern agriculture. On closer inspection, something completely remarkable can be seen. A detailed depiction of the complete solar system configured identically to that known to contemporary science. With the sun prominently figured in the center, each planet appears in its correct position and relative proportions to the other planetary bodies. On the outskirts is one additional planet, a tenth not currently located by astronomers of our modern era. Astronomers around the world are on the lookout for this evasive celestial sphere, as a growing body of physical evidence indicates that it does in fact exist. According to modern science, Prior to the invention of the telescope in the 1600s, humanity had no knowledge of outlying planets beyond Jupiter, as these bodies cannot be viewed with the naked eye. Since the day of Galileo Galilei, optical astronomers have amassed an important body of knowledge about the outer planets. These theories established by astronomers from around the globe have been uncontested these last centuries. With the technological advancements of our day, new vantage points have developed such as the unobstructed view of NASA's Hubble telescope and the perspective gained through unmanned probes sent on reconnaissance missions to the outer reaches of our solar system. These breakthroughs in space exploration reveal many inaccuracies in earlier astronomical conclusions.